All right, we're going to create a complete Tor Onion service with Docker and OpenSUSE in less than 15 minutes. Unfortunately, my presentation is a little longer than 15 minutes, but not much more. And I promise to keep my slide deck short. But first of all, what is Tor? Tor is a free software and an open network that helps you defend against traffic analysis, which is a form of network surveillance that, that threatens personal freedom and privacy, confidential business activities and relationships, and state security. How does Tor work? Uh, Tor works basically like this. So, Alice's Tor network obtains a list of Tor nodes from the server directory. Her Tor, Tor client, which is normally the Tor browser, uh, picks up a random uh, path to the destination server. Green links are encrypted, red links are in the clear. So anything inside of the Tor network is encrypted. Doesn't matter if they're using HTTPS, HTTP, doesn't matter the protocol, it's encrypted. But once you leave the, the, um, the Tor network, then it's, not, then, it's, then it's normal traffic. If at any time the user act, uh, visits, another, uh, visits another site, Tor, uh, Alice's Tor client selects a, second, a secondary random path. Again, the green links are encrypted, the red links are not. What isn't Tor? Now, if you read anything about InfoSec or about the security community, you're going to hear that Tor is a bad place. What isn't Tor? Tor isn't the dark web. Tor is a security and privacy network. It is used by normal people, journalists, activists, bloggers, law enforcement, business executives, militaries, and IT professionals. I'm not going to go into these long spiel about each one of these, but I did leave a link here uh, so you can actually see more about how different groups of people are using Tor. But it has problems. It's got bad neighbors. There are lots and lots of bad websites on the Tor network. We know what those are. Those are drug markets. Those are crime markets. Those are really bad. There are really bad things. And because of this, it's got a bad reputation. I would not do this presentation at SUSECon because in a corporate environment, people aren't going to want to hear about Tor because, it's, because it sounds bad. It's got a bad reputation. It's, it's edgy. It's also a little slow. Because of the encryption uh, factor within Tor, where everything is encrypted at least three times for every, uh, to get from you to the outside internet, via Tor, you're going to have lag, and there's no way around that. But we can help change the face of the Tor network. We can encourage, encourage security and privacy ad advocates and users to harness the power of the network. We can encourage nonprofits to mirror their websites on Tor. We need good neighbors. And of course, you can build your own Onion service. If you've got a blog, or you're thinking about doing a blog, maybe put it on Tor, or maybe mirror it on Tor. Um, if you've got a nonprofit, especially a nonprofit that deals with information such as whistleblowers, mirror your, your information, you mirror your website on Tor. That, that makes sure that, you're, that you, both you and your users get that extra level of security and privacy. How do containers fit in all this? And um, how are the Onion services made? Well, the old way and this is not using containers, Bob wants to build an Onion service. This is what we call the Tor website. He's got a website already, but wants to, to be available on Tor. This is to protect the privacy of his users. He installs a Tor service, Zipper and Tor. Of course, he's a good Linux user and uses OpenSUSE. Uh, he edits his uh, Etsy Tor RC file and tells it to listen on port 80. He starts a service. He gets a new uh, Onion ho uh, host name and anybody can go to that website uh, via the Tor browser. The new way, Geeko wants to build an Onion service, but he's very protective of his privacy. He, uh, he's got ideas and information that he would like to share with the world, but he doesn't necessarily want people to know who he is for whatever reason. He creates a web container and attaches it to the Tor container, which is what we're going to do today. He never opens port 80, 443, or any other port locally. So if you do an uh, in-map on his server, you're not going to see those ports, ports open. They are not open. Apache thinks it's open, 
And Apache will bring in traffic on those ports, but they're not really open. Tor, the, the Tor client or the uh, Tor server, Tor service will uh, actually bring in that traffic and make Apache think it's coming in on, on port 80, but it's not really. Um, he could find, um, he, uh, again, he finds his new Onion host name in var lib tor host name on the container. We're actually going to use a little script to do that for us, but it's going to be there. Accessing Onion services. Alice hears about Bob and Geeko's websites. She installs the Tor browser. Again, she's a good OpenSUSE user, zipper and Tor browser launcher. Anybody with a laptop here who, who is not, uh, does not have Tor already installed, go ahead and do that because we're going to be doing some live exercises. Um, it's not the fastest thing to download, but it's out there. And of course, it's free. She, never, she puts in the Onion URL like any other. Neither Bob nor Geeko ever see who she is or any other information that she doesn't want to give. Matter of fact, if their website, let's say, is just serving plain HTML files, no scripts, no JavaScript, nothing else, just plain HTML, there's nothing that he can see about her, and there's nothing she can see about him. Um, she doesn't know who Geeko is uh, because he doesn't explicitly say, and there's no easy way to find out because Geeko is not an idiot. Geeko doesn't, doesn't go around on, on Reddit saying, hey, I've got this website. He just has it out there um, anonymously so that way he can give information that he wants to share. She appreciates that she can also be, view Bob's website securely, securely and without fear of being monitored. What are Docker containers? So we're going to get into the container part now. A container image is a lightweight, standalone, executable package of a piece of software that includes everything needed to run it, code, runtime, system tools, system libraries, and settings. Well, how does this help us? It's easy to run several Onion services at once. You don't have to know how to set up the individual pieces. You don't have to be an expert in MySQL. You don't have to be an expert at Apache or Nginx. You focus on your content and not on your administration. Wouldn't a VM work also? Sure. There's nothing wrong with running a VM. However, if you don't want to research all of the running pieces, or if you're new, or if you're highly constrained, for example, you've only got a VM, and you don't have the resources to create another VM inside of it, which is not usually a, a good idea, um, containers make more sense. Some, some, some comparisons um, between virtual machines and containers. Isolation, portability, uh, what they contain, and the speed. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this. <laughs> um, but the big thing to point out is that containers run a little faster. Uh, they have some limitations. VMs require more overhead. They run a little slower. But they also contain a full operating system and not just a piece of an operating system needed to run an application. So our demonstration. Today, we're going to use three containers. The first one will be a web server running Apache. Uh, will be a uh, web server running Apache and WordPress. The second will be a MySQL database, and the third will be running Tor. For our demonstration, I'll be using Docker, ima uh, Docker images to create the containers, and the Docker, com Docker compose command to set up everything quickly and easily. Using these steps, you can replicate this example website on your own. The dependencies, the dependencies uh, will. Uh, all you have to do is zipper in these these um, these command these um, these applications if you don't already have them already, and the dependencies will take care of everything else. And here's my Git file, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this smaller. I'm going to go ahead and get this in myself. Copy. By the way, is this big enough for everybody, or is, do I need to make it bigger? Good? Great. So we've just done that part. Make this big again. Let's look at this Docker Compose file that we just pulled down. Uh, we want to first talk about, uh, even though we, in the previous slide I said it was going to be um, 
the Apache, then MySQL, then Tor. In the actual file I've written it as Tor first, just because it's easier. Uh, so let's look at Tor, the Tor service. This Tor service is running off of an image called Goldie slash Tor hidden service latest. Uh, Goldie is actually pretty good in that his images are up to date and he generally keeps the latest version of Tor in his image. This links to the WordPress image in that the WordPress image contains Apache, which is going to be listening, listening on port 80, even though it's not really. Um, it's going to save its, key, its, its hidden service keys into a local directory dot, uh, in the Tor directory. It's pseudo looking for um, ports on port 80, even though it's not really. The, the database image is running my, uh, MariaDB. Uh, in this image, we can predefine our variables. These are really crappy passwords, I know. Um, MySQL root, the database, the name of the database, the user and the password of the user. And again, we're going to save that configuration to a local file. So if we do crash this container, we can just bring it right back up and not lose any data. And then the WordPress uh, container. We're using the standard generic WordPress um, image from hub.docker.com. We're going to link this to the database because the um, my, uh, WordPress needs the database in order to work off of. The environment uh, of variables have to, meet, have to match what are here. So we know that the database name, user, and password are here, and we have the same thing here. And the database host, by the way, it knows that the um, name of the database is DB. So it's looking for DB on port 3306. This is, in this case, it actually is a real port, but it's inside of Docker. It's never seen on the outside. We're not going to publish this on the outside. It's just inside of the containers. And then we just Docker compose up minus D. Minus D will get, run this in as a daemon, not live. So, oh, yes. They are not. Um, I do have a lamp, uh, lamp stack image that I wrote myself, but I haven't gone through all of the work of rewriting all of them for OpenSUSE. Um, the Tor one is based off of Alpine, which is the smallest um, distro right now for, for, for uh, container images. Uh, the WordPress and MySQL are based off of Debian. Uh, I've written, rewritten the MySQL one for, for uh, for less once, but I haven't rewritten it for OpenSUSE. So we're going to start the containers. Docker, compose, up, minus D. And that's it. Docker PS. We have three containers running. They've been up for a few seconds. Uh, these are brand new uh, like as of now. So I've got a little command I'm going to run, a little script, docker exec, and then the OpenSUSE tor, uh, a con tor, tor one container, and then onions. On onions is the little script that gives us the host name. And there's our host name. So anybody running the Tor browser should be able to open this and probably hack me. Not the fastest application. Or you can blame it on my laptop, you know, either way. And you might think, well, this is a VM. You're connecting from your browser to the VM. Big deal. No. I'm going from this browser to Germany, to Ireland, to Netherlands, to my VM. Each, each of those hops has an extra, has another layer of encryption. Uh, this is what's cool about this. 
Uh, this VM has a 192.168 IP. I don't have access to this building's IP, uh, router. I can't do any kind of port forwarding. What's happened is that the port, is that the Tor service went out to the Tor network and said, hey, I'm here. Here's my, um, here's my host name and this is, and this is what I'm listening on. The Tor browser went out and said, hey, I've got this, um, this, this host name, can you, can you send me there? And it does. It does not use real IP. This is actually running through UDP. So that's just a simple website. It's simple WordPress installation. Not the most, you know, interesting or secure um, setup. But it works. And it works quickly. That's, what, that's the power of containers. I didn't have to go here and set up a, a VM for you. And then... I could use salt. I could use salt or whatever to set up everything for you really quickly. But in this, in this case, setting up the, the container worked and it worked well. But that's not all. At my home laptop, I'm running a Gopher server on Tor. Why? Because. Want to run Tom Tomcat? Again, very simple configuration, and we can look at that. Uh, that file is very similar. Vim Docker Compose. Again, we're using the Goldie uh, image for Tor, and we're using Tomcat, which is based off of OpenSUSE because I wrote this. Um, so you can run to Tomcat, but don't just take my word for it. I know Tomcat normally runs on 8080, but I make it easy. Yeah, that helps if I get the right pass IP or right host name. So we're running Tomcat over Tor. It's just a matter of bringing up the image, and it works. And um, that's pretty much it. I promise to keep this short and sweet. Um, and we did the we did set up the entire website, the entire uh, WordPress website, in less than 15 minutes. If you want to play around with Tor, this is an easy way to do it, especially if you're concerned about security. Any questions? Yes. You're, you're, you're right. Um, the best way to do it is to use a hardened um, um, words, uh, a hardened uh, web service like, like, like uh, Nginx. Uh, Docker does have some hardened um, web services out there that you can, you can look, in, look into. Um, it, but it's really up to you. You need to do that on your own uh, due, diligence, due diligence on that. Uh, anybody else? Excuse me? Is there a way to load balance your open website? There is. Um, there has been some, some exper experimenting with um, Docker Swarm, um, but I haven't gone into it that much. I'm hoping this time next year I'll do one on how to do, this, do the same thing on Kubernetes. So we get true load balancing, true uh, distribution. Mm -hmm. It advances advertising inside the Mm-hmm. So everybody can find it. Yes. Where are you going to? Excuse me? Everybody can find it. Mm -hmm. Since it does advertise, it's a location. It's a physical location. 
No, uh, there is no. Um, I have not advertised a physical location at all, except for the fact that you know that I'm here and I'm doing it. Um, but no, uh, you need to be a real, uh, like, government level analyst to be able to find the physical location. What happened in the case of one of the black market or the uh, dark net markets? The person who who was running that gave a lot of clues about himself. If he had just stayed quiet about who he was, he probably wouldn't have been caught, because it's very, very difficult to backtrace um, uh, someone running a tour service. Um, the way that they normally do that is either they do just normal detective work, or there are ways such as finding a vulnerability in the in the tour um, in the uh, tour browser, hacking that, and then that gives them away. At least that's what the government has told us so far. I mean, there might be other ways. But that's what they've released so far. Okay, anybody else? Okay, that's what we're going to wrap it up then. And I hope everybody has a great rest of the uh, conference. And um, thank you very much. <laughs>